She was the first and only woman mayor of Seattle, elected in 1926. In fact, Bertha Landis was the first woman mayor of any major American city, taking office just six years after women could vote. But as senior producer Ethan Morris shows us, that's only part of the reason Bertha Landis stands out in our state's history. Seattle in the 20s, a city jumping with jazz and bustling with bootleggers, a city on the forefront of change in terms of politics and gender. The 20s promised a lot for women. In Seattle, no other woman of the time would have a more profound impact than Bertha Knight Landis. Born in Massachusetts, Bertha Landis and her husband Henry moved to Seattle in 1895. A devoted wife and mother of three, she was also passionate about community involvement. She was very active in the women's club movement, which was very big at that point in the 20, early 20th century. Landis quickly became a recognized community leader. She served as president of the Seattle Federation of Women's Clubs. In 1921, she was the only woman appointed to a city commission on unemployment. Her political career started when another panel member urged her to run for city council. She won by a landslide. Well, it was a big deal because she and, and Mrs. Catherine Miracle were the first two women on the city council. On the city council, Landis was quickly voted council president. When Mayor Edwin Doc Brown left Seattle for the Democratic National Convention, he named Landis acting mayor. While acting mayor, she made headlines by firing the police chief, William Severin, for failing to enforce prohibition laws. When Doc Brown returned, he reinstated Severin, but Landis had already made a name for herself. Again, at the urging of others, she decided to run for mayor. It was her colleagues in the women's clubs who really pushed her into doing this. She really didn't seek the office. In fact, it took her all day to make up her mind at the last minute to do it. <laughs> she ran on a campaign of municipal housekeeping, promising to clean up City Hall. Landis won easily, beating Doc Brown by 6,000 votes. Once in office, she began to make good on her campaign promises. She cracked down on bootlegging, straightened out a financial mess involving the city's streetcar, and she pressed hard for public ownership of utilities. These are the issues that she took and worked through and solved, and, and one of the, I think, one of the achievements of her administration. As the first woman mayor of any major U.S. city, she enjoyed somewhat of a celebrity status, too, entertaining guests such as Will Rogers, Charles Lindbergh, and the Queen of Romania. But in short order, Landy's conflicts with the utilities and business interests opposed to prohibition caught up with her. By 1928, they wanted uh, the good old boys back doing their bidding. <laughs> That's what it boiled down to, I think. After only two years in office, Bertha Landy's lost her re-election bid to a relatively unknown challenger named Frank Edwards. But she remained active in the community and politics. After she was out of office during the Depression, she, she headed up the city's bureau for assisting women in need and uh, establishing sewing, sewing rooms, which gave a little bit of employment to some of the, of the needy women. Bertha Landy's husband, Henry, died in 1936. Landy's retired to the Wilsonian Hotel in Seattle's University District. Late in life, she moved to California, then Michigan, where she died in 1943 at the age of 75. So what is her legacy? It's managed to stay a fairly progressive city. And in a state where the most powerful elected officials today are all women? I guess they owe her a little bit of a debt at that, come to think of it. <laughs> Despite her historical contributions, there are no official memorials, streets, or buildings named after Bertha Knight Landis. But there is one thing, the chair she used as mayor. It sits in a glass case outside the Bertha Knight Landis conference room at Seattle City Hall.